Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I am here with Sabina Vairacha. I love your name. I just <laughs> want to do a cha-cha-cha. <laughs> Sabina was born in Bosnia and immigrated to the U.S. in 94 as a war refugee. She started her career in theater, writing, directing, and producing plays for the Lincoln Center and the Shakespeare and Company. In 2005, she ventured into the world of film and directed and produced the critically acclaimed feature documentary, Back to Bosnia, which premiered at the AFI Fest and screened at over 30 festivals worldwide. Winning the Director's Choice Award at the Crossroads Film Festival and is currently available on Amazon and iTunes. From there, she went on to work as an assistant to writer-director Max Mayer on the film Adam, starring Hugh Dancy and Rose Byrne, and became an associate producer alongside Gregory Crudson on Cathedral of the Pines. And she shadowed director James Whitmore on an episode of CBS's Madam Secretary. I'm so thrilled that you are here. Um, it's just so inspiring to see your film, Variables, which is screening here at the Ojai Film Festival. And I imagine that that is semi-autobiographical? Yes, yes. Um, it, the original nugget of the story came from a friend of a friend. He was um, 15 when the war was happening, and he lived in Sarajevo and was a math whiz. And he was telling me a story that I never heard of, that in the middle of the war, he, his little group of a math club that he was a part of, they kept coming, uh, figuring out how to get out of the city to compete in um, different national tournaments, right. which was crazy because the city was under siege and they were being constantly bombed and they were barely surviving, but they were still had time to do math. And then they won the nationals and were sort of whisked out of there by the UN to go and compete in International Math Olympiad in Canada in 1995. <laughs> Sedamsto, Pitao sam te nešto. Nešto nije u redu. Nikola. Nikola... Ja, Jandrić. Ma nemoj. A ko ti dođe milo radi Jandrić? To mi je tata. Opa! Pato! Sin Milora Jandrića. Pa pravo zvijezda, nema što. Nije ni čudo da imaš slovo za prevoz. Znaš, kaže da je Jandrić nesto, ali siguran sam da je otišao u Četnike. Srbin je Srbin. Možda pričaš šta hoće, ali svi su oni koljači na kraju. When he told me this, I just thought, this is a crazy story. I mean, this, I can't believe this really happened. Uh, but when I sat down to write it, um, I wanted to infuse it with my own story. And um, I'm from northern Bosnia where there wasn't much um, physical fighting, it was more psychological warfare. And um, my parents got me out within a few months of the war. And I spent about a year on my own without them um, as a refugee in Croatia. And I was 14 at a time. And I wanted I to can't really- can't imagine what that would be like to be separated from your family your formative years like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it really had a big impact on me and who I am and my story and, um, and I'm really affected about that happening to kids nowadays and so I wanted to, in his story he goes back and he gets reunited with his family and they survive and he now lives in New Jersey, uh, but I wanted to sort of put in my own touch on it and so my protagonist in my film stays on his own in Canada to try and figure out 
what happens, he doesn't know whether or not he'll ever see his family again, right. which is really how it was for me. Pobjedio sam bronzu mama. Znam da nije zlato, ali mislim da će ipak vrijediti šta god. Sa njom plati Harisu da vam on od sad donesi vodu i paketi. On je raje, odrače i sigurno sam, a i brz je. Samo molim te, reci mu da mora čekati da snajperu odu na cigaru. Nakon svako ubijenog, zapali jednu. Well, it really comes through. I mean, it does. And it's, it's fascinating that we keep repeating the problems in history, right? So right now we have our immigration issues here. Um, and we don't help people to seek asylum anymore. Mm -hmm. And you look in the news about taking children from their families and throwing them into prisons. And so, you know, what is your view on immigration in our country with your experience? <laughs> um, so first I should say that when this, and so this is 1994, this is the middle of the war, where my mother and my little brother managed to get out of Bosnia within about a year after me being in Croatia. So our little unit, my dad is still in Bosnia at that time. And um, every other country around Europe that was taking Bosnian refugees were taking them either temporarily or under conditions of, they were sort of ghettoized in a way, and like they were just put into their own communities. And, and my mom heard about the United States opening up its borders and said, we're going there because when we get there, no one's gonna care about us being Muslim. No one's gonna care that we came from anywhere else because America is the place where everyone is an immigrant and we can just come in and part, be part of the melting pot. And so we came here because of that. And it really breaks my heart that nowadays that's changing. And it was very hard for me to, um, during the whole Syrian kids and, and also now when the kids are being separated at the border, right. it's. It's very triggering for me because I was separated from my family and um, I honestly stopped watching the news because I would cry every single time. Yeah. And especially now, like with the newest policy being announced that you can't even come to this country unless you can financially support yourself or have medical insurance, which means that my family and I would have never been able to, to be accepted here, which right. is crazy to me. And It is because you're you seeking know. asylum from the atrocities and right. it's happening everywhere right and right. and this country was founded on you know the right to pursue happiness and mm -hmm. and the right to have freedoms and um so it's pretty devastating i think it's pretty pretty awful policy and my hope is that none of that will carry on for for very long if we um I don't want to turn this into a political <laughs> show, yeah. but uh, but hopefully there will be you know some changes made soon on that front, and and um, you know we'll start having a little bit more of a humanitarian uh, yeah. view, right? Because you know everybody has the right to, to live in peace, and and it's it's true. it's a big tragedy. Yeah, that's true. So you went on to earn your MFA, mm -hmm. and uh, at USC, and. Um, have directed for Warner Brothers, a feature drama, Voodoo Macbeth. Yes. And then you are a winner of the Alfred P. Sloan uh, competition, and, and there's a whole slew, I can't even write them all, it's a page <laughs> long, of yeah. all the grants and all of the foundations and, and all of that. So tell me, you know, what are you doing now? So um, this film, The Variables, is the one that won the Sloan Foundation Prize. and. Um, ended up sort of becoming my thesis film for USC because I just graduated in May. So um, Sloan gave me a, f a grant to make it, to make this movie, and I'm very grateful for that. And it's been a very, it just began its journey, its festival journey. We just premiered it this summer at the Sarajevo Film Festival and or just started American festivals. This is only a second one we screened at. And um, so one thing is that um, I've been, a lot of people have been asking me about turning this into a feature film and it's something that I'm thinking about and I would have to sit down and, and dig into it. Um, but in the meantime, I'm, I developed another script um, that I just came back from. There's a screenwriters colony in Nantucket that they take four screenwriters every um, October and give us a month to develop and write a feature screenplay, which mm, was wow. incredible. Um, so I wrote um, the screenplay called For Buras, 
Muraz is a Bosnian word, it means brother, but it could also mean like bro, buddy, it's like a slang. And um, it's set in a Bosnian community in Florida, where my family and I landed when we came to America. Um, and it's about two brothers, one that managed to get out of that world and is living his American dream in New York, is, has a you know, um, high paying job and a wonderful girlfriend and a fancy apartment, and the other brother who didn't, who stayed in that community, and uh, the younger brother dies under suspicious circumstances. And mm -hmm. so when the older brother goes down to bury him, the community asks him to see if he can figure out what happened. So it's really through this journey of, of figuring out what happened to his brother is really his reconnection to the roots and um, right. self-discovery of, of his own connection to the past. Right. Um, so that's something that I'm, that I just sort of fresh off the presses and coming out into the world. So we'll see. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So are you taking it out on spec? Do you have an agent? I am um, looking for, I'm meeting with some managers right now. Um, and um, we'll see. I mean, I'm taking it out to some producers because part of the Nantucket screenwriters colony was that they introduced us to some mentors from the industry. Right. And um, so they were very beneficial in giving us notes and the scripts, but also afterwards in helping us put it out in the world. So, that's great. Yeah, so it literally just ended four days ago, so we'll see. Oh my gosh, so you're just on this whirlwind tour. <laughs> yes, it's You went been, from there to here. Yes, yes, oh, that's it's, great. it's been really wonderful, yeah. <laughs> so um, tell me about um, what you plan on doing next. I mean, obviously, you've got the film degree, you're, mm -hmm. you're a director, you've got projects that you're mm -hmm. you know, writing and, and setting up. You know, what do you see yourself doing sort of in the next five years? Mm -hmm. Well, I also, I um, am trying to get into TV directing. I think there's something really interesting about it. My, since my background is in theater, I was a theater nerd. Um, I discovered theater when, when that year that I was by myself as a refugee in Croatia. It was the only community that really embraced me. And Croatia at the time was very um, uh, anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim. and. It was the only community where I could just be myself and no one cared. And um, I spent my teenage years and, and all my 20s really Im you know, immersed in theater. And, and I find that there's something about TV that reminds me of that, that sort of longevity of the, of the company, like the company of actors that you come to and you create this world together. And so I'm um, shadowing on another TV show right now, um, 911 at Fox. Oh, okay. And um, I'm just learning how to do that. And that's, I find that really interesting. And um, we'll see, I mean, that's sort of its own path. People tell me you kind of have to pick one, like stick with like TV for a while and then switch to film or st stick with film for a while. And then, but I, I'm kind of, cu I'm way too curious. <laughs> so I'm trying to do both. Well, there's learn. never one path, right? That's very I mean, true. so That's very I true. think we, we now, especially with new media, I mean, people were generally, you know, film actors, mm -hmm. television actors. And now, I mean, with mm -hmm. new media, that's just shaking it all up. You're getting all of these, I mean, Scorsese obviously right. just directed The Irishman for Netflix. It's exactly. not even getting a theatrical. Exactly. So, and he's exactly. traveling, you know, so it's, it's a completely different model. The world has been completely shook up. And I think that, I think we need to shake things up. So yeah. I would just say, you know, there's something about just following your heart and following your bliss <laughs> and just doing what calls to you as opposed to what everybody tells you, what the box is that you're supposed to fit into and how it's supposed to be done. So. I appreciate that. Though. Yeah, Thank I you. mean, just go for it, you know? <laughs> I really want to see more women out there writing, mm. directing, producing, and, and mm. I think that there's so much more complexity and depth to the stories that can be told. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm all about popcorn sometimes. I don't want mm -hmm. to have to have it be something really yeah. heavy storytelling, but I think that, you know, I think that there's a lot of stories in women that, that have just yet to be seen and how that's going to shape yeah shape media. I think we have an obligation to, you know, talk to people through film about really big issues that can help change their minds, you know, like all of the immigration issues. And so I think it's just great that, you know, you're out here telling stories about things that nobody else could tell but you. I mean, you've had this experience. I mean, who else is going to tell this story? And it's beautiful. It's profound. And I loved how you had the mathematician and the, the writing and the visual effects with the, 
the, math, the mathematical equations, but really they're sort of trying to figure out how to save their lives. Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, it was just, it was so, so, so well done. I think you should make it into a film. I really yeah, do. I think. Thank you. I think along yeah, that. It's, it's one thing that my friend um, told me the story. He said, when nothing else made sense, math made sense. So for him as a teenager trying to, I mean, really, you know, Bosnian War, he's, you know, it hit us from, it started when I was 14 and ended when I was 18, and for him the same. So those are very formative years in which you're trying to figure out who you are, but you don't have time because you're just trying to survive. Right. And so it affected all of us. Like my entire generation is kind of, has an identity crisis in a way because we never really acted out in those impulses of a teenager. Well, you never got to be a teenager. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, watching something like that, I think it's powerful. It's, it's a reminder of what, you know, what we have and not to take it for granted and, and, and all the good fortune and to be really grateful for it. So. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, I mean, going back to what you said about um, this medium having an opportunity to educate people, yeah. it is something that I'm very passionate about. You know, I, my goal is to make uh, really big um, commercial films. Like I would like, love to direct a Bond film one day. Right. Um, but to infuse them with stories that More are grounded. More substantive. Yes. yes. Yeah, that are grounded in right. real experience of right. people. Because I think that um, entertainment and media and movies is something that America is, it's the biggest export we have. It's what the world is watching from us. Right. And um, if we can find a way to sort of, I always say, like, this guy's uh, broccoli is candy, you know? I think that's something that I'm It's a really good way of saying it. You know, yeah. Like, and then it's more palatable mm -hmm. because people can hear it. It's not somebody up there preaching to you about right. what you need to be doing. Right. But you come to it on your own mm -hmm. by seeing something that sort of opens your eyes to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, I mean, just look at Get Out and what that did for the, the talk of, about racism in America. It's wonderful. I mean, you go to see exactly. what you think is a fluff little horror film. And, right. You know, I think there's a big power in that. Right. And, and it's actually you know. the light touch mm -hmm. that, that makes mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. you know, less heavy-handed, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I'm very much passionate about that, and that's sort of where I see my trajectory as a filmmaker. Well, good for you. I can't wait to see all that mm -hmm. you continue to do, really. I, I wish you all the very best of success and want to thank you for coming here and yeah, speaking you. to us today. And, and um, yeah. yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Like, and I love being here. It's oh, like good. I'm glad. I'm place. glad. Yeah. <laughs> good. Well, that's it for today's episode of Dialogue, and we'll see you next time.